Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. And today we're going to look at the Apple IIc computer. I got this Apple IIc off of Craigslist. The problem is that uh, it looks like some of the RAM chips are bad. When I do a uh, self-diagnostic test, it reports back that uh, there's at least one RAM chip in the main uh, bank of RAM that's bad, and possibly some bad ones in auxiliary. So we're going to take it apart and see if we can solder in some new chips. Let's get started. Okay, so we've got the motherboard out. And the first thing we're going to do is just get our tools together. So I'm basically going to be using four different things. I've got a soldering iron. Um, and then I've got a pair of calipers, which we'll see uh, how to use those later. And then I've got a solder sucker, uh, which we're going to use right now. And then finally, a pair of uh, flush wire cutters. So what we want to do first is, um, unfortunately, with the Apple IIc, all the RAM is soldered directly onto the board. And so we're going to have to uh, desolder the chips, and then I'll put in a new socket, and then uh, put the new RAM into the socket. So with the solder sucker, it basically is just a plunger, and when you push the button, it just uses vacuum to suck up the solder. Uh, so the trick is just to, to heat up. Uh, one of the pads um, so that the solder melts and then quickly uh, press the uh, plunger to uh, suck the solder up inside the, uh, the solder sucker. Um, and you might have to repeat it several times uh, to get it all out, but once, uh, once you've got it, you should be able to see the, the, the hole in the board should be pretty clean and that just the pin is sticking up. Um, I found with the Apple IIc that some of the, some of the pins didn't actually uh, come out of the way, but then we can clean those up afterward. All right, so now you see I've got them all desoldered there on that side. I turn the board over, and I just clip out the chip. Um, it should be pretty easy to take out now because um, most of the pins are pretty loose. But uh, you just cut away uh, using the flush wire cutters, and the chip comes out. And what you're left with is probably four or five pins that uh, didn't actually come out with the chip. And you definitely don't want to pull on the chip to... Uh, to pull the pins out, uh, otherwise you risk actually damaging the, the circuit board itself, which is very bad. Um, so next we're going to use the, the forceps. And the trick here is just to uh, attach the forceps to one of the pins that's still in the board. Um, so just attach it onto it and then basically just heat it up using the soldering iron on the other side. And then just let gravity uh, do its job to just pull the pin um, straight out and you can see there the, the the forceps are attached to one of the pins um, and once you've done that you should be able to get all the pins out and the hole should be fairly clean um, if there is anything left in one of the holes you can just use the the solder sucker again um, to, to clear out those remaining holes okay sometimes it actually might be helpful to have an assistant um, to clear out the holes and here I have my daughter uh, helping me so she's just using the solder sucker on one side and I'm just heating up the hole uh, with the soldering iron on the other side uh, just to get any remaining solder out. Alright so the pins um, the holes are all clean and now we're going to put in our socket so I'm inserting that in and the trick here is to put it in and make sure that it doesn't uh, fall out while you're trying to actually solder it or just get uh, crooked and so what I'm doing is just bending a couple of the pins over like one in each corner uh, just to just to make sure it's nice and snug flush against the board and once I've got that in then I can go ahead and actually start soldering in all those pins um, the soldering itself is pretty straightforward here I'm just using some solder flux to clean off all the pins and just make sure it's a nice clean surface for soldering and now we'll just go ahead and uh, we're just going to solder that socket onto the board um, there's no real special tricks or techniques here it's just kind of standard uh, soldering you can see I'm there I'm kind of just cleaning off the uh, the tip of my soldering iron um, and once we've got everything soldered we'll put in the RAM chip and see what happens okay so here's our new RAM chip and these are four five six fours so they're 64 kilobits uh, 200 nanoseconds and I got these off of eBay from Stephen Buggy um, I'm actually replacing on the Apple IIc board there are 4264s made by Mostech uh, with the nice Apple logo so it's kind of too bad that I'm having to replace them. Uh, but anyway let's hook up the keyboard and 
uh, the monitor and we'll give it a spin. So to do the uh, diagnostic self-test, you just hold down the open Apple and closed Apple keys uh, when you power the unit on. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll just go ahead and test the entire system, uh, uh, starting with the, the main uh, RAM and then moving on to the auxiliary RAM. Um, and if everything works out okay, um, it should flicker and flash and make some beeping noises if I had the speaker hooked up. And at the very end, um, it should say system OK, which it does. Uh, so now let's put everything back together. So everything looks like it's working okay on this particular Apple IIc. I actually had to replace five of the RAM chips uh, and I went ahead and put the sockets in so they'd be easier to replace in the future. Uh, but it looks like everything's working. So thanks for watching.